So hi guys, welcome to Golang Tutorial Part 6. My name is Tensor and I'm from the Tensor Programming Blog. Today we're going to expand upon our web app and we're going to add an upload handler. This handler should allow us to upload any type of file and then we're going to serve that file back to the user so that they can see the file. This is not really something that you would use practically, at least not in this way, but it is something that showcases a lot of the cool features of Go. So one of the first things that we need to do is we need to actually create our template. So we're going to actually create the template must variable up here for our upload as well first. We're going to say tmpl upload and we're going to say equals template must template new and we're going to call this one upload. And then instead of edit or test in here we're going to actually just put in upload.html. And while we haven't created this yet, we are about to. So now we need to create our upload.html. So let's create a new file and we're going to call it upload.html. So here's our upload file and inside of it we're going to follow the same pattern that we used in edit and in test. And that is creating a main area and then creating a navbar area. So let's actually uh, just copy and paste this here. And then we will actually edit it. So let's delete all of this. And the reason we're doing this is because there are no other pages that are going to be attached to this uh, template. So it's okay for us to hard code it. We don't need to actually import the title and I'm going to do that down here as well. Next we need to create a multi-part form. So first we're going to wrap this in a div. So this is our upload form and as you can see here we're just wrapping it in a div class of container fluid. Um, the important parts of this form are this part, the method of post, the action of upload, and the ENC type of multi-part form data. Also the two data types here, or the two import types here of file, um, my files, and the multiple part here, and then the import input part here of submit with a value of submit. So this is going to let us put in a file and this is going to let us submit the file and then it's going to post a method of post to the upload pipe. So that's how it's going to interface with the server. Then our navigation of course we've just added a, another nav item here and it's going to lead to our upload. So we just said upload a file and we put that in our edit and in our test HTML files as well. So now let's go back to our go file and let's actually create our handler for uploading files. So we're going to create a function and it's going to be called upload. Inside of it we're going to of course pass the HTTP response writer and the HTTP request. Now this pattern of passing in these two variables is what Go actually looks for when it looks for um, simple handlers. So if you're creating a handler function uh, there's a safe bet that you would use these two as your uh, main uh, inputs. You can add extra stuff as well, but um, you don't necessarily need more parameters than these two for a handler function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to create a switch function. And this switch function is going to be based off of the request method. And this request method, of course, if you know anything about uh, servers, you can interface with requests in many different ways. So for example, we're going to say, okay, if, if the user interfaces with this HTTP with a get method, so in this case we're just going to manually input our title, so we're just going to say title equals upload, then we're going to create a page with the title, we don't need to create a body because there's no body variable here, and then we're just going to call on our template upload and we're going to execute the template passing in the uh, HTTP response writer base and P which is our page. So now we're going to create another case and this case is for if a post happens at this uh, particular uh, part of the HTTP. So if post happens we're going to first we're going to parse the actual form so to do that we're going to call parse multi-part form and in here we're going to pass in a hundred thousand so this is telling the form how much uh, memory it can use and we're going to deal with the error so we're going to say if error 
equals nil, or is not equal to nil rather. HTTP dot error. So we're going to throw a status internal server error if this comes back with an error. Now we're going to create a variable called m, and this is going to take in the multi-part form. So this is basically just identifying the form, creating a files variable, and this is going to take in the actual file that we're inputting, and this file is going to be called my files. So technically we can allow the user to input multiple files at once. That's why we are using plural here, and that's why we're also going to iterate over these files, just in case the user decides to input multiple files. So now we're iterating over the files and we're opening each of the files, and we're going to call the defer file.close method as well. So after we iterate over each file, the files will then be closed after the uh, function completes running. We're going to handle all of the errors the same way that we handled the error down here. So we're also going to throw a, a or so we're also going to throw an HTTP status internal server error, and then we're going to return. So if there is an error, it's going to actually jump out of the entire function. So now we're going to import a library, and this library is going to be called OS. For those of you who are not using IntelliJ, um, you should import it. So it's just OS, as you can see here. I'm going to put it here so it's a little bit more organized. So we're going to use OS to actually create a folder called files. And inside this files folder, we're going to put our file that is being uploaded here. So with this, we're actually creating a folder called files. And we're putting, or we're creating a file with the same file name as the file that's being uploaded. We're going to defer close on F here. And then we're going to handle the error the same way that we were handling this other error. So if error is not nil, throw an internal stat or a status internal server error. Now we have one more thing that we need to do, and that is to actually copy the file into the folder. So we're going to call in io.copy. So this is yet another library, the io library. So if you see all the way up here, it imported io for me. So you should import io after OS. So inside of this IO copy, we're going to pass F and file. And this is going to let us actually copy the file into this area here. So we've created this path here. Then we're going to copy the file into that path. So now we're going to deal with our error. And it's going to be the same exact thing that we've done here. So finally, we're going to call HTTP redirect. And we want to redirect to the file that we just created. So we're going to call our file folder. And then we're going to redirect to our file name, and then we're going to send an HTTP.statusFound message back. So now, finally, we need to deal with our default case inside of our switch statement, and that's just going to be W write header, and we're just going to pass in a status method not allowed. So basically, what this is going to do is it's going to make sure that uh, the user can't perform any other methods aside from get and post on this particular area of our application. Okay, so now let's actually serve this handler. So like the other handlers here, all we have to do is call http.handlefunk. So we're calling it on the upload HTTP area, and then we're passing upload into it. And then we need to make the actual folder test, which we haven't created yet. We need to uh, serve it like we're serving the static file folder here. So as you can see here, all I did was replace static with files, or files with static rather. So basically, this is serving anything that's inside of the files folder back to the user so they can actually query it by just typing it into the HTTP. So let's actually create that folder. Even though our actual program should create the folder on its own, we're going to create it just in case it doesn't have read write permissions. So let's call it files, and there we go. So now if we run this, it should work. So here's our program, and we're at the test area. We can go to the edit area, we can edit things. And of course we can upload files, and here you go. So this is our little CSS that we put in there. Makes this, you know, red and this blue. We're going to upload this picture, golang.png. And if we hit submit, there we go. It pops back up for us, so it's working fine. And if we look in the folder, you can see golang.png pops up in there. We can also pass videos in here. So as you can see, the video actually works. So this is just uh, the Elm tutorial part 4, and I've uploaded it to our server. So it took a minute for it to actually upload, but it 
is working. It actually has sound and everything. I'm not going to play it because you don't really want to listen to my voice in two separate audio filters. We can also upload music. We can upload PDFs. You can upload basically anything. I'm uploading here the edit text file that we have. So this is actually the text file that's reading out to our edit pipe from our HTML. So as you can see, it'll display basically anything as long as it's a readable file. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions, feel free to throw out a comment. And if you dislike the video, feel free to harass me if you want. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good day.